history is full of completely insane fashion trends, and some of which were very, very dangerous. So from radioactive hair to the worst operation ever, these are the 10 deadliest fashion trends in history. In the early 20th century, it was popular for young women to have glow-in-the-dark hair. They were able to achieve this quite easily. The chemical compound radium would be brushed into your hair, and after a few years of regular application, your hair would glow bright. Women would do the same to their nails to see similar results. What they didn't know at the time is that radium is highly radioactive. They should have guessed by the name, really, but they didn't and several women died. The Chinese tradition of foot binding is both disturbing and bizarre. From a young age, girls would have their feet bound with bandages. This would encourage her toes to snap and grow backwards. The arch of the feet would also be broken and bent backwards. This was to limit the length of the foot as much as possible. The ultimate goal was to limit the length of the feet to just 3 inches. A foot like that was seen as perfect, but it came at a terrible cost. The woman would be deformed for the rest of her shockingly painful life. This practice emerged in the 10th century and didn't stop being a trend until the early 20th. In the 17th century, the Chinese emperor tried to outlaw foot binding, but he failed. It really was that popular. You simply can't make a list like this one without including neck rings. Used by the Kayan people of Burma, they are intended to lengthen the neck. Young girls usually begin wearing neck rings at the age of three. As they grow older, the rings are gradually replaced by larger ones. By the time they are adults, their deformation is permanent. And despite what it looks like, neck rings do not actually extend the neck. They lower the shoulders, which gives the same appearance. After the rings have caused deformation, they cannot be removed as it would be a health risk. During the Victorian era, bottle green was a very desirable colour for clothing. For many years, the best gift an upper-class man could give his wife was a bright green dress. The only problem is that arsenic was a key ingredient for the green dye. And as arsenic poisoning was an easy way to die, it was a shame the colour green goes well with so many people's eyes. It has been shown that over 70% of Nigerian women bleach their skin, but there is nothing new about skin whitening. In 16th century Europe, women would do almost anything to achieve pale skin. The most common method was by use of a makeup containing lead. These days, we know lead to be poisonous to us humans, but back then they had no idea why so many pale people were dying. Other symptoms of the makeup include paralysis, brain damage, insomnia, and damage to the nervous system. The crinoline was a metal structure designed to hold up a woman's skirt. It was the 19th century and noble women were expected to dress in a certain way. I guess that certain way was to look like they had a massive arse, because that's what the crinoline did. But the crinoline was just as deadly as it was dumb looking. Due to its design, it often caused women to accidentally knock over candles and set themselves on fire. When that wasn't happening, their skirt would get caught on a carriage door, and they would be dragged along the street. A fontange was a bizarre headdress worn by 17th century French women. Use of the fontange fell out of style for a good reason. The scenario is this. A woman arrives at a dinner party. She is wearing a very large and very flammable headdress. This was when houses were still lit by candlelight. What do you think happens next?
just one number on this list killed men rather than women. And here it is. In the 19th century, it was fairly standard for a man to wear a stiff high collar. A stiff high collar was basically just a big stiff detachable collar. The collar was so stern that it would cut off blood circulation to the brain. The obvious outcome of wearing one was death by suffocation, but there were far more direct ways of it causing damage. In the early 1800s, a man fell over on the street floor. His collar was so stiff that it almost cut his head off. Next we have corsets. The problem is that they were often pulled so tight that they caused serious damage to the wearer. But there are worse methods of waste reduction, as you'll see in number 1. In the quest for a small waist, many women have actually opted for rib removal. For hundreds of years, they underwent dangerous operations to remove a rib or two. There are dozens of stories of Victorian women volunteering for the practice. Some were successful, but some died from horrific wounds. The stories may just be urban legends, but many women still undergo similar operations today.